Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this YouTube video. I hope you're okay. I'm Richard and I hope that today as we continue to go through the Beatitudes and our thinking on the Beatitude, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. I hope that this uh, really connects and, and helps. So Jesus said in Matthew 5 verse 4, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Now, one of the problems we have living in the West, that is, if you're watching this living in the West, is that we often try and sort of anaesthetise ourselves uh, from pain. Uh, we disguise it, we hide it. Uh, and sometimes we try and run so far away from pain that it feels occasionally it's not there. So we do things to try and stop the pain uh, by doing things like scrolling through uh, social media or watching endless boxes sets on Netflix or maybe doing a bit of uh, shopping on Amazon and that sort of gives us the sort of speedy sort of uh, feelings that maybe we need to escape uh, or we could do more physical things like overfeeding ourselves or over drinking ourselves or over drugging ourselves just uh, so pain isn't uh, the, the thing because you see pain is bad and failure is bad and grief is bad and losing is bad and brokenness is bad and sin is bad and as we hide ourselves from this or ignore it or imagine a completely uh, different uh, kind of life we're sort of uh, trying to escape I feel from the realities of life and I think if we're a Christian in the West or we're trying to follow the Jesus way in the West, we have inadvertently got ourselves uh, caught up in all this. We try and hide from our pain or ignore it or we develop sort of belief systems uh, where we sort of maybe listen to sermons or we might, if we're preachers, we preach that if we're in pain, we must be doing something wrong because pain is bad. It's not God's plan for our lives. And if we got pain, we're not the kind of Christian um, that we should be. And if we're really following Jesus, then pain shouldn't just be part of our lives. We, we should be on a different sphere. But Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are those who are in pain, blessed are those who are in grief, uh, for they will be comforted. And the reality is, normal life is that we grieve or that we're dealing with pain or that we're failing or we're running away from pain. Mourning is a natural flow of things. Grief is an ordinary thing. Pain will be part of our existence. If there's no pain in our lives at the moment, that is going to be a deeply rare thing. Pain and confusion are the norm. Even in the midst of things going OK, there will be pain. I want to take you back to an ancient psalm for a moment. Um, here in this psalm, I think we've got honesty and integrity going on. The psalmist is telling God exactly uh, how it is. The reality of life means the psalmist can only be honest uh, because the psalmist has hit rock bottom and in hitting that rock bottom, the psalmist shouts out. Um, must, before I read the psalm to you, I want to just say we don't know what the problem is. Just as I read the words to you, what would the problem be? Has he lost someone precious to him? Has a relationship gone wrong in his life? Has a mistake happened? Are people after him? Is he injured? I'm going to read the psalm to you. It's Psalm 130. I'm using the message. Help God. I've hit rock bottom. Master, hear my cry for help. Listen hard. Open your ears. Listen to my cries for mercy. If you, God, kept records on wrongdoings, who would stand a chance? As it turns out, forgiveness is your habit. And that's why you're worshipped. I pray to God, my life a prayer, and wait for what he'll say and do. My life's on the line before God. My Lord, waiting and watching till morning, waiting and watching till morning. O oh Israel, O oh mustard seed, O oh whatever your name is, wait and watch for God. With God's arrival comes love. With God's arrival comes generous redemption. 
No doubt about it, he'll redeem Israel or you. He'll buy back Israel or you from captivity to sin. So the pain in that psalm is set out loud and clear. But also, did you notice in the psalm, the psalmist is also living out the beatitude. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted because the psalmist talks of pain and then he recognises he worships a God who heals, who rescues, who redeems, who comforts, a God who loves. The two way thing expressed here, our pain and God's comfort. That's a two way thing. That's important. It's mourning and comforting. It goes together. There's something very deep and profound about that. Often we're so deep in pain that we'll forget the promise of this beatitude, the comfort of the beatitude. Our problems are so close, we can't see anything else. But this beatitude gets us to step back and maybe see something deeper and more profound and more beautiful. This beatitude gets us to risk that life uh, won't just be the pain. This beatitude gets us to see that life won't just be the comfort as we breathe together, we hold comfort and pain, pain and comfort. It can go on all at the same time. And that's something deeply real of God. Our God is never an either or God. He's always a both and God. So somehow God can hold it all together. So what I want you to do now is just think about um, your life. What words or phrases describe your feelings at the moment? It could be a lament. A lament is a really important thing. A lament is something uh, that is deep inside us and it's something about expressing regret or disappointment about something. And so I want us to be encouraged to live out and express our laments because there's so much in life to lament about at the moment. We're in COVID times, bad times. It could be, you know, COVID times has introduced the complete uh, injustice of our society, the way the rich can sort of flow through life. But if you're stuck in poverty, you lose your benefits and life becomes uh, very uh, difficult. We're living in Edinburgh, just down the road in Glasgow, we've got COP26 going on. It could be a lament for our environment and this climate emergency and climate injustice uh, that we are living uh, through at the moment. It could be a lament about racism or sexism or homophobia. It could be more personal. Lament the pain in our lives. And what I encourage you to do is maybe write this out, write the words out, write the failures out, write the relationships out, uh, be honest in front of God. I'm going to build on this uh, as I speak. Um, but what I want to say is pain and lament are a natural part of what it means to be human. And sometimes we need to express it by writing it out. So maybe you just want to pause this video for a bit and just write out some lament. Write out a list of what you're lamenting. Uh, share what you're lamenting. You might even want to write a psalm like we just heard. What is uh, your lament? But if you're turning this back on again... What I want to just remind you is that we've suggested uh, that often we don't like to be in a place of pain and we try and escape from it. We have stated when we face our pain, I think we create space for God uh, in something and something happens. And I think that's what happened in that psalm, Psalm 130. And when we create space for God, Jesus calls that space comfort and the psalmist calls it God's generous redemption. But I'm going to get even more practical now. How can we day by day practice the way of lamenting, the, that way of bringing the pain of the world to God and seeking his comfort? How can we bring the pain of evil and selfishness of what's going on and then take it deeper? How can we bring our pain of injustice into a creative space and make it holy? And how can we bring our dissatisfactions and see them from another perspective? Let me read to you some words of Jesus from Matthew chapter 6. He said, when you fast, do not look sombre as some of the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show us their fasting. 
Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will be not be obvious to others that you're fasting, but only to your father who's unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Jesus here is offering a way of being that enables us to moving from thinking we have all the powers in ourselves, you know, to sort everything out to a place where we create space for God. And then in relationship, we work things out together. And it's a method he used for himself, most famously when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights right at the start of his ministry. Simply put, fasting is going about a meal or food or something for a specific period of time. We can fast from things like food or alcohol or unhealthy stuff. You can fast from things like doing social media. Loads of my friends are sort of saying, having a few months off Facebook, bye bye. Or watching telly or, ta- or you know, or you can even fast from takeaway coffees. In doing this, you're saying, I'm not going to let these things control me. So when we go without... We, alongside it, then create space for, and the space, I think, is for prayer, for contemplation, for meditation, for silence, where we don't let the noise of the world control us, but the peace of God. And we don't do it in a flashy way, as Jesus says in this. We do it silently and secretly. We do it when we're looking our best and not somberly. As a community, perhaps we need to do this from time to time. We could discuss about it, about how can we do a fast together? However, it might be more beneficial to get it into our own private uh, practice. And I want to suggest that creating space like this is a wonderful way to help us to face our laments, our pain, the world's pain. And it's a helpful space in which we can maybe discover comfort or encounter comfort. It's so simple. And it's sorry, it sounds so simple to be true this, but often the best spiritual practices are this. Prayer is essentially so simple and it's us who makes it more complicated. Now, there was a 14th century mystic called Julian of Norwich and she experienced a lot of pain in her early life. Both her parents uh, were killed by the plague you know, the COVID of the times. And for many years, she suffered from serious and debilitating illness, which I know some of us have had that kind of stuff to deal with. Yet she discovered in her difficulty, she could experience peace. Essentially, she discovered the way of fasting and prayer and silence, a spiritual practice where she could put her complete attention on God or try at least because it's you know putting complete attention on anything is hard but she could try and put complete attention on God and a really famous saying attributed to her is all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well I'm not sure if it's really famous but it's a familiar phrase all shall be well and the manner of things shall be well in her fasting and in her contemplation she didn't discover emptiness she discovered grace. Her pain returned with hope, grief and comfort combined. So can I encourage you right now, if you're sitting at home, just to get comfortable. We're not fasting in these moments, but we're going to create space for God. Since ancient times, spiritual seekers have practised stillness, which is a silent form of prayer. And we can enter into this when we fast. We miss a meal so we can be silent for a bit. And in this, we are aware of our immediate experience. We suddenly discover we're in this moment and the presence of the one in whom we live becomes more apparent. The presence of the one in whom we live and have our being. A helpful way of getting into a quiet place is just reflect on the verse be still and know I'm God be still and know I'm God so I invite you if you're watching this to sit comfortably and then when you're comfortable just turn uh, off the screen or press pause on YouTube for a moment let's close our eyes and let's breathe and we breathe in deeply and then we slowly exhale 
Notice how your body is feeling as you breathe in and out. In and out. And try and stay present in this moment. And if you get distracted thinking about the past or the future, all you do is you just return to your breath. I'm worried about my tea. Don't worry about your tea. Return to your breath. I can't believe I said this to her yesterday. Don't worry about that. Just return to your breath. And be still and know I am God. Be still. It might help you to focus on a name of God like Yahweh, Jesus, Lord, Protector, Healer. Or you could say a short breath prayer based on Julian of Norwich. All shall be well. All shall be well. So I invite you to sit and just pause and press pause on the prayer and set your timer for five minutes and come back. So welcome back. I wonder what that experience was like, that experience was like for you. Is it something you find easy or difficult? What did you notice when you just took time to be still and to wait? So I've got some homework uh, for us all to do, and it's about journaling. Uh, and hopefully it's quite a creative uh, thing uh, to do today. Um, so what I hope we've discovered in some of the things I've been saying today is that when we sit in stillness, when we fast to make create space for stillness, there's an opportunity to discover comfort. But also we can feel, you know, if we're really honest, nothing but sadness and despair. Sometimes we just can't find solace. And when we do this, we are invited to complain. You can complain to God. You can say to God uh, what is on your heart. Jesus mourned, if you remember, over Jerusalem when he saw it, because he saw the pain which was ahead for that city. And he mourned for it. He mourned and he cried for it. And most importantly, his, the key moment of Jesus on the cross, in one of the most profound sayings ever, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? So this week, I invite you into the way of lament and by writing a lament, by complaining. Why not have a go at a song or write a poem? Or you could write a letter of complaint and it could be a letter to God. And it could be acknowledging the things that make you feel sad and angry and confused and powerless. And if you have courage to express your disappointment, I hope that in expressing it, you might be surprised by the comfort you receive of being heard. So that's our journal. I just want to thank you uh, for tuning in today. Thank you for being part of things as we journey through the Beatitudes Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Lord God, we just thank you that your word is so profoundly precious and important, yet it's also so perplexing and uh, hard to work out from time to time. Lord, we hate pain, we hate grief, and it's so much part of our experience. And we pray that you would help us to deal with the painful parts of our lives in a way that draws us close to you and helps us to receive your comfort. We worship you, Lord. We love you and we pray for your blessing, blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we just ask that it will be with us all, all those who we love, all those who are in mourning and pain at this time. And we pray that this would happen now and always. Amen. So God bless you. See you really soon. See you next time. Bye.